Yes, my people, how are you guys doing today? We have a very intriguing video. Now, I don't know if we're going to use this as a series episode, God knows, but today we are going to be calling this Project RB Leipzig or Project Red Bull. So what we're trying to do is implement that Red Bull philosophy from real life into Football Manager. So the Red Bull tactics, which is generally vertical and high pressing football, the shortlisting, the players, the scouting network, all of that, we're trying to implement that from real life into Football Football Manager and by doing so, hold on just a second, hold on just a second. We will be using this Red Bull analysis from MRKT Insights. It's a very, very good read. So we're going to take parts of this. I will leave the link in the description, of course, and then you guys can have a good read and you can try and implement this elsewhere. God knows what you want to do with this article, but we are going to be using it for today's video. We're going to be talking about, of course, the Red Bull networking and the tactics, the scouting, all of that good stuff. It's a long read read but we're just gonna take the most intriguing part so let's get stuck into this video Multi-club ownership has emerged as one of the most interesting and promising business models in the football industry. In recent years, the ever-growing commercialization of the industry has attracted many investors. The approach changed from buying single clubs to creating a multi-club model. The Red Bull company was one of the first to forecast, predict and recognize the potential of the multi-club ownership trend. Red Bull started their investment in the football industry with the acquisition of SV Austria Salzburg in 2005 and renamed the club to Red Bull Salzburg. From a strategic perspective, it was a smart move to start the investment with an Austrian club due to the market knowledge Red Bull has as an Austrian company. Starting from Austria, they developed their club network all over the world. And as you can see in the map, Red Bull owns clubs in four of the seven continents. However, the project Red Bull Ghana was dissolved in 2014, meaning that right now they actively manage clubs in North America, South America and Europe. The Red Bull Football Group is a multi-club network spread across different continents that gives them access to a huge and diverse football talent pool. The benefit of such structure is that young talents are not torn out of the environment and can stay in their culture for as long as possible. It means for a young talent in any of the Red Bull clubs to develop in a modern infrastructure, train on the cutting edge scientific training methods and learn the Red Bull playing philosophy from a young age. All without having to adjust to a new culture. Once the players are older and more mature, the transition to another Red Bull club in Europe is easier as they already know the system works and can adjust faster to deliver high performances in the new environment. So here on the website as well, you can see the strategic management of the multi-club ownership. It is a very, very detailed read, but we're going to skip over to the role of clubs. One of the first strategic decisions is whether the clubs across the portfolio are equal or if there is a flagship club with other supplier clubs in the hierarchy, a concept that is common in other industries where horizontal or vertical integration through M&As is a widespread. Furthermore, club level strategy should clarify and specify each club's goals, roles and duties in order to avoid counterproductive rivalry inside the group that hinder the use of synergies. Red Bull implemented a vertical integration of the football clubs with RB Leipzig being the flagship club of the whole group. From a strategic point of view, this makes sense as Germany is one of the top five leagues in Europe. Plus, with a great history and huge commercialization potential. But also, the other clubs have a clear role aligned. So from this method, not only do RB Salzburg and RB Leipzig profit from the system, the smaller clubs can profit in one of the following ways. One, receive good players on loan from Salzburg or Leipzig. Or number two, receive money from the Red Bull group to buy promising players. RB Salzburg and RB Leipzig have generated a transfer surplus from which all other clubs can benefit. So now hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about the Red Bull company, but also multi-club ownership as well. I know I have. I also learn a lot of things when doing these types of videos, but now we're going to be talking about the playing philosophy. So we're going to read again a little bit from that website, but also we're going to go into Football Manager and create that 
well, Red Bull tactic for us to use in this Red Bull season. So now for the playing philosophy, the internal supply chain of players developing to the next higher Red Bull club works so well because they implemented all over the group a similar playing philosophy and style. Red Bull clubs tend to deploy an aggressive brand of attractive football at a higher intensity. One of the cornerstones of the Red Bull philosophy is to be active both with and without the ball. Their goal is to maintain a high level of speed and verticality throughout the game. When the opponent has the ball, they usually employ a high aggressive pressing strategy. During their own possession phases, they permanently try to get runners behind the opposition's defence. Having a similar playing philosophy eases the transition of a player from one club to the other. The players know exactly what is expected as they have already played in a similar system. The approach is a huge advantage of the Red Bull group and one of the main reasons for their success so now we have read that it's time to head over into football manager so day one at rb leipzig and for the club culture you can see already football manager have kind of implemented that sort of philosophy so the club culture play a high tempo pressing football which is required play attacking football of course we're going to do that do not sign players over the age of 28 and sign players under the age of 21 for the first team so we've kind of accepted this club vision now it's time to look at the tactic that we have created for RB Leipzig this season it is a 4-3-1-2 and we are obviously focusing on vertical football the mentality is on attacking we are playing with an extremely high tempo again focus on that narrow shape that verticality final third low crosses in transition to play with that aggressive pressing system when the possession has been lost we are using counter press for the line of engagement we are pressing with a much higher line of engagement with the trigger press set to much more often the offside trap and prevent short goalkeeper distribution now this hair is the tactic that we are going to go with throughout the whole season but not just the tactic that we have to implement we also have training as well so let's head over to the next screen so as you can see here i've got two red bull sessions one when there's one game during the week and there's also one when there's two games during the week the tactic and these training schedules of course with the analysis link will all be in the description so when there is one game during the week we are focusing on teamwork transitional press on the monday there's endurance transitional press again <laughs> Wednesday attacking direct and chance creation Thursday defending from the front defending engaged and attacking general Friday attacking movement then the match Sunday recovery and match review so we've got our sort of data analyst um, session involved as well but also in training we are focusing on that teamwork that high press and that aggressive attacking play of course which is why we have transitional press twice defending from the front and also defending engaged when there's two games during the week it is fairly similar but of course there is now a game midweek on wednesday with the recovery on thursday and match review again after that recovery session so now for the individual training i did set this but i set this before the first game of the season because then that is when all of our transfers were in the squad that way i can have a good look at the squad and see who needed to improve where what attributes needed to improve for an example what would i be using on dominic slabashay slabashay jabba now i've actually learned how to pronounce his name before in a different video but of course it's all gone from my head Mohamed simican as well of course all of these guys i will show you what i have done for the training hopefully at the end of the season we can see some sort of red bull development but this here is the tactic that we're going to go with of course up front we have two advanced forward focusing on getting in behind opposition's defense but also we have that central midfielder on attack doing the same thing but that there is the tactic stuff all wrapped up now we're going to be talking about their recruitment and obviously we're going to have a look at who we signed in football manager And now we can have a little read about their scouting system. Having a clear playing philosophy helps create specific profiles and a clear requirement for the necessary skills of new players. The outcome of this approach is more successful transfers and a smoother scouting process. A shared information system needs to be in place that allows the group as a whole to scout together 
and plan careers. A specialism of the group has been in early talent identification, signing players to the group before the age of 18. They are not afraid to heavily invest in high potential players with transfer fees paid out for youth players totaling millions of euros. The approach requires a large network of scouts, all of whom needs to share an understanding of the type of players the group will be interested in. Now, despite the fact that RB Ghana dissolved in 2014, the Red Bull group still has a strong presence in Africa. Some African leagues are still not really on the radar of European clubs. Red Bull recognized the potential of the current state and found a lot of undervalued players in Africa like Patson Dakar or Mwepu. The key role in the recruitment of African talents is former West Ham and Tottenham striker Frederick Canute. He owns the Agency 12 management and supports the Red Bull group in processing of transfers. Now, when it comes to their approach, I found this part really, really intriguing. Red Bull has an interesting approach as 30% of players they buy are transferred from a group club. As the player has already played the Red Bull way and does not need much adjusting time, he can perform right from the beginning. Furthermore, 63% percent of all players they buy have a nationality from a country they own a club which is interesting this can be brazil germany austria or well ghana this indicates that they are well rooted in the respective countries they own a club the red bull philosophy to develop players can be seen in the type of transfers they make and the average age of a player at the time of the transfer most transfer types are either promotions from the internal youth teams loans or free transfers and on average 22.37 years old once a player is transferred within the red bull group for money the price they pay is mostly under the actual market value this is an interesting point as they do not have to overpay for a transfer which is not usual anymore in the past few years so we have learned a little about how the rb clubs maneuver in the transfer windows so now we're going to go into football manager to have a look at the shortlist the player profile but also the transfers that i have made in the first season or in the summer transfer windows at rb leipzig so when it comes to the player search of course the player's profile is very very key so now if we're looking for that under 18 year old player to sort of sign straight away and develop we can we can search for some under 18 players and then we can kind of loan them back out onto another red bull club or if we're sort of looking for a first team player at rb leipzig we can kind of just well we can remove this or even the age if we want to still try and keep it young we can knock it down to the age of 22 and now we're looking at the nationality of these players in football manager i have narrowed it down to the five which is or which are german austrian ghanaian brazilian and american of course all nations of where the red bull clubs are in now for the player attributes i've kind of designed this around the high pressing aggressive system which is why we have work rate teamwork aggression stamina but also kind of agility acceleration and pace to try and keep that high tempo up and then lastly we have anticipation decisions as well to try and well if we're looking for an attacker to get in behind the opposition's defense they need to have decent anticipation and decisions but also when midfield i want midfielders i want my midfielders to be able to read the game and first touch you need to have a decent first touch in order to control the ball in a high paced game so this is the player profile that we are looking for now if i just press okay well we're gonna go to 18 actually because i saw a couple players now if i knock it down to 18 we have four players here these are all some intriguing players we have Yunus musa a central midfielder we have giovanni reyna we have brian oday and we also have raquel Mley from brazil now some of these players apart from these two here i believe these two players are they're fairly expensive fairly expensive from us i mean 22 million is not that expensive but giovanni reyna of course is way too expensive with 69 million we do have brian o'day but we aren't using a winger he's naturally a winger he doesn't necessarily have great finishing to be a striker and then we also have raquel Mley, who is a left back now this can be a decent signing for us i'm actually going to add him to the shortlist for some odd reason he wasn't on the original shortlist that is how i kind of search for players so now we can look at the shortlist that i have sort of created So here we are, we have a short list of 24 players. Now, I believe actually, because you would need to kind of look at your squad and see what you actually need. For me, I've already 
I kind of skipped this pit. <laughs> so I've already worked out what is needed for my kind of system at Red Bull. Now, what am I doing? I'm looking for this. This is what I'm looking for, or even this actually. So I've kind of worked out what I'm looking for in this narrow sort of system. We do need another striker because at the moment, we've only got Yusuf Paulson and we've only got Andre Silva. But I also felt that we were kind of light in this area here for a DLP on defend now we do have tyler adams who's mostly going to be a right back for us we have nkunku who's going to be mostly a number 10 kevin campbell a central midfielder danny almo i've already planned to use him as a central midfielder on attack we've got sabushlai i'm going to struggle to pronounce his name we've got hydera and we've got lamar in all truth not necessarily great defensive playmakers so going back to our shortlist we have quite a few central midfielders here we can pick from Lucas Sukic, I believe, Andre Seiveld as well. From a lot of these players are from um, from RB Salzburg as well. So Nicholas Seiveld, he's from Salzburg. Mohamed Kamara, Aronson as well, Capaldo. So we are trying to keep it in that Salzburg group. But we also got Greenwich as well, who's from Hoffenheim, I believe. Yes, he is. We also have Florian here from Moch and Gladbach. We have Lucas Bequeta, Shagler as well, but he's got a long, long term injury. So this here is the shortlist for Central midfielders and for strikers we have benjamin shesko we also have ivan nilsson from porto we have seku koita from salzburg samuel lino a very interesting choice from gil vincente we also have gabriel martinelli who in truth we're never going to get jao pedro from watford i believe yes a argentine argentine a brazilian same as martinelli a brazilian of course and we also have kevin shade now this is a very very interesting pick from freiburg he's 19 six foot two six foot sorry i don't know why i said six foot two i meant to say he's six foot two not six foot two <laughs> and he's got dribbling off 13 heading off 14 but he's not really good enough to start at the moment so this is our shortlist for strikers our shortlist for midfielders that's my sort of recruitment and planning done when it comes for the transfers now we're going to skip to the first game of the season where i actually signed two of the players on the shortlist before we get there you can let me know in the comments who would you have signed who would you have signed who would you have signed from a central midfielder list and from the central striker list as well which two players will you have signed bear in mind we only have 17 million so you guys would have to been smart with the transfer for fees and off court and of course the clauses that we all love to add in football manager but now let's skip to the first game of the season to see the two players that we have signed so pre-season went really well and so did the dfb pokal first round but who did we sign let's go to the transfers and look at the transfer history to see who we signed this is obviously a very exciting bit so number one of course we did the damn thing now we could have signed karim adiemi now i've had karen adiemi before on football manager and yeah he's a great player in all that he is a great player in all that but it, it, it's a bit predictable saying that benjamin shesko was probably predictable from that list as well but if we actually go to the list our options were kind of limited and we also needed to sign a player from one of the rb clubs and benjamin shesko obviously was our choice an 18 year old striker who's going to be partnering up top with either andre silva or yusuf paulson when he does get some games but now the second signing that we made is florian now i'm actually purposely not saying his surname because i don't actually know how to pronounce it correctly but in central midfield we do have florian here a very very nice central midfielder a deep line playmaker as well he's six foot one i've just noticed that i have just noticed that his value has shut up how much do we sign him for 18 million pounds so within a couple of years we can make a very very nice profit of these two players now we have played that dfb pokal game we won that nine nil as we can see benjamin shesko getting a debut goal scoring two and florinia i mean we have to watch these goals we have to watch these goals so the first goal is the benjamin shesko goal has florian knee house oh, i should pronounce his name i'll probably pronounce it wrong and there's shesko's first goal there now for the goal in the full i mean it's practically the same goal it's practically the same goal. Niehaus this time with the assist. Again, I just said his name and I probably pronounced it wrong. And then in the 54th minute, here is Florian's goal. Hopefully it's a screamer. Here he is. 
Ow, with the right foot. Hopefully it's a screamer. And it was a lovely screamer as well. So we have started the season, well, fairly decent with a 9-0 win. We have our two sign-ins under our belt as well. But of course, it doesn't just stop there. Now what we're going to do is skip to the end of January, where this time we've sold some players. And of course, we had to buy some more because those players needed replacing. We're keeping, we're sticking with the same philosophy. Was trying to buy someone who is Brazilian, Ghanaian, something like that. But also a player from one of the RB clubs. We're trying to stick with that philosophy, not move away from it. Because of course, that is the whole point in the video. The transfer budget is looking yeah, And the way budget is looking meh. <laughs> but now we're going to skip all the way to the end the very end of the winter window we are at the end of the window as you can see the second of february and as you can also see we are on top of the league now let's look at some of the schedules because of course we're in the champions league group we finished second surprise well i say surprisingly we are kind of the second best team in this group but we have won four game well that includes an 8-1 win against lil a 7-0 win against bromby a 1-0 win against liverpool and also a 4-1 win away from home against lil we drew nil nil at home to bromby away from home we went to anfield and we lost to one a slight defeat at anfield we cannot be too disappointed now we have some very decent results here i can see 3-1 against bayern munich but also in training as well i did mention earlier in the um video that some of these guys we do have some training i would say focus i wouldn't say a routine i would say focus so for an example benjamin shesko who's actually broken his leg in our game absolutely outrageous we are focusing on attacking movement shaboshlai again attacking movement florian he's focused on defensive positioning now some of you guys might actually see the new signings in this page so if you do just ignore that for simicon we are looking at agility and balance garvio we are looking at agility and balance again Mukiele, he's on defensive positioning tyler adams defensive positioning as well hydara he's not on anything but now we can look at those transfers that we made at the end of the window or during this window sorry we have signed gabriel barboza now the reason why we actually signed him is because we sold where is he yusuf paulson for 41 million to manchester city so we signed or we sold Paulson for 41 million and then we signed Gabriel Barboza for 13.5 which I believe we got the better player is absolutely insane that we got that sort of money for Paulson but we also sold Klosterman and Benjamin Hendricks as well so we did need a right back we loaned out Forsberg as well so we did need a right back and guess what I did I didn't sign a right back <laughs> I signed a central midfielder who can obviously play at right back now this central midfielder it's interesting what I've done here. So I've actually looked for a similar type of player to Kevin Campbell and also to what's his face? What's his face? Conrad Lamer as well. They are kind of RB players, aggressive, hard working, can last 90 minutes, press really, really well. And I really, really wanted that. So though Nicholas Capaldo is actually Argentine, he is from one of the RB clubs. So it still counts. It still counts. We signed him for 30 million pounds. Though he's not aggressive like the other two, he's still got that high natural fitness, the high stamina, the work rate, the teamwork as well, the positioning. He can read the game as well. Anticipation is not great but it can get better especially in the bundesliga it is around the average so those are the two signings that we have made and of course we can look at some of the results oh there it is so yeah we did win 9-0 against Mainz, but also against Augsburg. nicholas capaldo scored on his debut he's played one and scored one already so now what we're going to do is skip all the way to the end of the season to see where we finish see how we did we are in the champions league where we have been drawn into milan so now we're going to skip towards the end of the season well at the end of the season and see how we done now if you want another season or whatever you can tell me in the comments that wasn't really the plan to continue this we can do this at different clubs so we could do a project leipzig for example then a project juve a project arsenal so on so on so now we're going to skip to the end of the season to see where leipzig did really end up champion is champion is ole ole, ole.
early. So RB Leipzig have won the Bundesliga. We got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Liverpool, which means we did knock out into Milan, but we got knocked out by Liverpool. And in the DFB Pokal, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal once again, but this time by Bayern Munich. Now, disclaimer, I didn't actually play the whole season. This is sort of a simulation. I played the first five games at the beginning of the season. Then I played the first five games after the January window. Now, the reason why I did that is actually so some of these new guys actually get games. If you leave it to the assistant, someone like Benjamin Sesko might not necessarily play any game. So let's look at some of the squad stats to see who has performed well. Andre Silva, 34 goals in 44 starts. Benjamin Sesko, with 15 goals in that so he actually played games so of course I forced him to play games um, Yusuf Poston was actually injured at the start of the season so he was forced to start at the start and then we kind of made sure that he played as well afterwards until he got a leg breaking injury of course so He's played 19 games or started 19, scored 15. Gabriel Barboza as well, another one of our signings. 15 goals in 18 starts. Shabba slide there with 15 goals and 17 assists. Wow. Florian ended the season with a 7.05 average rating, which for me is actually very, very good for a DLP on defend. Now, a DLP on this game doesn't necessarily get high rating. So a 7.05 is actually very respectable. And in the last five games, he's got a 7.22. Nicholas Capaldo, his average rating, he ended the season with a 7.02. And look, see what I mean here? He's only got five starts. Now, if I was in control from um, that from that window all the way to the end of the season he would have certainly played more than five games but the game um, obviously just doesn't fancy him playing so that is how our new signings got on and i'm very very pleased with that we can also look at the development as well because at rb leipzig or at all the rb clubs that is also very important and you can see he kind of dipped off air with his leg breaking injury so all time of course his bravery is going to be affected because of his injury i mean all of his development is going to be affected because of his injury which just isn't fair next is florian who we signed if we look at his all time attribute development we can see here he's got a slight improvement overall when it comes to his technical ability slight overall improvement in mental and slight overall improvement with his physical ability so it's nice to see that he is developing fairly fairly well even though he's age 25 right now just go just go just go slight overall improvement in technical slight overall improvement with the mental and slight overall improvement with physicals but as we can see here for agility and balance well you can't see you can just about see because my face is there he has really improved in this area here agility and balance which is what of course we wanted that's why we gave him that additional focus simican now uh he hasn't developed at all this is probably someone that you would look to sell after this season but looking at his bravery that did go down one he must have had a very very big injury or a bad injury so yeah he sprained his knee ligaments it's not the worst injury but the severity of it was major so now we can look at the stats in the bundesliga of course we won the league if we look at the team overall we scored 102 goals we had the most shots four we've completed the most dribbles and we had the most clean sheets with the fewest conceded we defended really really well for the most goals andre silva is in that list but Lewandowski just took the season away super slide andre silva angelino all in the assist list i mean andre silva with 11 assists as an advanced forward is absolutely insane most key passes dominic subberslai Viewers conceded our goalkeeper. We performed really, really well, as you can see here on this statistical page. Now, surprisingly, I can see here offside that Kevin Shade guy is here. He's actually got 14 goals. I mean, oh, we could have signed him. This, we could have signed him. Oh, who is this guy? Well, I, we kind of discovered a guy here and I, his work rate and teamwork is what actually put me off to signing him because I felt this was kind of important when it comes to that RB signing. But nonetheless, he oh, he's, he's doing well. He is doing very, very well. Now, unfortunately, that wraps up this video. And unfortunately, what I failed to do as well is kind of send players on loan to one of the RB clubs. That would have been nice for the video, I guess. But we didn't get to do it again. I'm showing you something that you guys can't actually see but yeah basically I haven't loaned anyone out to any any of the RB clubs so how did you guys like this video I hope you guys liked it give it a thumbs up if you did now that is the end of this video if you guys want to see more videos kind of like this then let me
Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want to see more. I was trying to get my tea. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more. Have a good day. Have a good evening. Peace out. God bless. Beep. I'm having a mess.